Hello, everybody. Are you? Yes, you're listening to me now. It's okay, the sound? Great. Yep. Yeah. So I, what I did is, so I will just show where I finished yesterday. So let me see. So yesterday, sorry, it's not here. <laughs> um, here. I showed this um, maximum principle without final constraints. So let me go to the statement. So here's the statement. Great. Uh, so here's the statement without the Hamiltonian. I would like to show it without with the Hamiltonian. So that's the idea. Okay, so this is the maximum principle here. So just to recall, because uh, of course many people had forgotten the notation. So we were in a problem of maximizing a final cost. Okay, subject to a dynamics in X. So X is the state variable. X, a fixed initial value and the control is in some set U. I think that's everything. So this is our small <laughs> optimal control problem. Great. So if we have um, that X star, U star is an L1 local minimum. So the, the locality and the, the L1 norm will be with respect to the control, okay? And P is the solution of that uh, adjoint equation that is written here, okay? So we have the adjoint equation that is, uh, so P dot is minus the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the state variable and the transversality condition that links the cost state with the with the final cost then the maximum condition for the hamiltonian holds that is that the optimal control maximizes the hamiltonian among all the possible values of the control so that's the idea just to recall great okay so what do we have i showed the proof so i yesterday i wrote the proof like handwriting but I had it already in the slides, so now it's in the slides. Okay, and now we are going to the examples. So these are the references for yesterday. The slides will be in the website soon, or maybe they are already, I don't remember. <laughs> Not yet, but uh, later today, hopefully. They, they will be, they will be at some point. Uh, for, for sure, at the end of the week, I we will put everything in internet. So examples. First I showed like, okay, so to see that this is not a, just a theoretical result, of course, the idea is that, okay, applying the Pontrain maximum principle should uh, be a benefit instead of solving the, the optimal control problem that is an infinite, infinite dimensional optimization problem, okay? So, Let's see how I, I will show like this example that is uh, completely academic, just to show how we can apply and solve, uh, completely solve an optimal control problem by using Pontrain. So we take this, uh, this optimal control problem. So we are maximizing the final value of X1. And then, so what we control is the, um, I was going to say the acceleration, but it's not the case because there is minus x1 here. So we have x1 dot is x2 and x2 dot is minus x1 plus u. So if, if this term wasn't here, that's easy. It's just uh, maxi taking the maximal value for u, but the term is there indeed, okay? So it's not, uh, we cannot solve it like uh, looking at it and saying, oh, this is the optimal control, okay? So the optimal control here is between bounds, minus uh, one and one. So what we do is we write all the elements of the optimal, of the Pontrain maximum principle. So here, just to, uh, the Hamiltonian is, so the Hamiltonian here will be P1. I will call P1 the cost, the action state associated to the first equation and P2 to the second equation. So it's P1 x2 plus p2 minus x2 plus 
as u. Great. So from this, we get equations for p. p is the multiplier. Great. But as I said, this is a simple problem. Okay. We get this. So this is minus h with a derivative with respect to x1. Sorry. Whoop. Yes. So this is consistent, the mistake. Great. And then this is the derivative is minus h x2. Perfect. And what is uh, easy here? So great. We, we, get, we get equations for p that do not depend on the state or neither on the control. So that's so easy. So we can solve the equation for the for p. No, this is not usual. This is a very academic example. So we can solve the example for the equation for p and get the exact values of p. Okay. And then once we have p, we go to the maximum condition. Okay. So the maximum condition says that the optimal control maximizes the Hamiltonian. So that can be written as is written in this line. Okay. So U star uh, maximizes that quantity. So the, the important thing here is this part. Okay. We actually don't care about this because the control doesn't appear. So the maximization is in this quantity. And if we want to maximize, and we are in that uh, compact interval minus one, one, we only care about the sign of P1. Okay. So if P1, is positive, then the control will be will assume its maximum value that is one. If P1 is negative is negative, then we have to put the the value equal to minus one. But in this case, is 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 minus one and one is just the sign. There is another so mistake. Yeah. Yes, but we have a question. Ah, okay, let me see. About, about including the function in the Hamiltonian, the function to be minimized, maximum. Do I? Ah, no, it? you mean the final cost? No. Yeah, I think so, that's what you refer. <laughs> yeah, okay, good question. So I, as I, I said that yesterday, I will write all, all my problems with only terminal cost. So when you, if you had another type of problem, let me write here. Okay, change color, black, okay. So if you had a problem like this, like with an integral cost and okay, whatever here, mm -hmm. then the Hamiltonian will have Will, will be like this. So this will depend on x and u. Or it can depend also on time. Okay. Okay. So in that case, you have to include the function that you're the internal function that you're maximizing in the Hamiltonian. But in the case of terminal cost, in the ter case of terminal cost, so this doesn't exist. And the cost enters in the information of the Pontrain maximum principle through the transversality condition. That is through the final condition in the co-state. So it will be, you know, that P of T is equal to the gradient of P at the optimal value. Okay, you're welcome. Great. So perfect. After all these corrections that I did in the sub-index, I will I mean, now I'm in the problem. <laughs> uh, we get that actually we can express u star as the sign of p2, right? So we can completely solve the problem. We get the optimal control. Okay, but that's easy. That's very easy. Okay, just to well, just to just to show that that we can get to something completely solved. And I will show another problem here. The next slide. So this is already different, it's nonlinear. So we have the control multiplied by the, by the state. 
Okay, so here we have, uh, it's an example, it's a toy example for, for the modeling the production and reinvestment in a factory. So here we have, imagine we have a factory. Uh, and so we have the profit, okay, of we produce some product, okay, or some or a set of products, and we have the profit that will be X, the variable X, okay, and at each time we decide to reinvest a percentage of that profit, okay, great. So when we reinvest, we produce more products. So the idea is that uh, the, the, the dynamics of, of the profit is has this form, okay? It's uh, some, some coefficient, some revenue rate, K, multiplied by U and X. And then the profit in an interval of time will be the integral of the profit, that is the integral of X, minus the integral of what I have reinvested, that is here. Great. And so the reinvestment is between, sorry, it's a control. Let me go back. It's very sensitive, this screen. Uh, it's the control between zero and one, perfect. It's, it's, so this is, a, and again, a very simple problem. But I will, we will see that uh, solving that analytically using the Pontrain maximum principle is not immediate we can we can do it we will do it in the next slide but it's not completely fast so what i want to show with these uh, examples is the following is that uh, even is that each problem in optimal control um, even if, if they look easy they are like solving each problem is an ad hoc problem we have to it's very it's like handcraft. We have to see exactly what is going on. Is there is no recipe that works works for everybody for for every problem? Okay, so that's why also numerical algorithms are very important in optimal control. So let us solve this problem. Okay, so to start, I will write here. So what I can do. It's just copy the problem like in, in a corner of this slide. So we're maximizing X. Okay, we'll simplify the notation, of course, just to make it shorter. This is our problem. Okay. And so we make some uh, assumptions. So we take T greater to one zero positive, of course, and k equal one, just to simplify the, the calculations. Great. So first, we have to, I, I will write it in the mayor form, that is only with terminal cost, so we can directly apply the version of the maximum principle that I gave. So we add the state variable You can tell me if you don't understand when I write. I just want to be a bit fast, but I think it's in the limit, no? We add the state variable y with dynamics. So we put y dot equal to, so that the idea is that we have to put y dot equal to x minus ux. And then since so the idea is that now we will maximize the final value of y dot, of y, sorry. So now the problem will be maximize y of t, okay? Subject to what we had before. Perfect. So, so we change the problem to the mayor form, that is mayor or terminal cost form. Great. Now we apply what we what we learned yesterday. So perfect. We have H, that is the Hamiltonian. Now that depends on all the variables. Okay. It's equal to P U X plus 
Q X minus UX. So the first thing to notice here is that when we change to the major form, a, a problem like this that didn't have a terminal cost before, there is a simplification, a very simple equation for, for this action state. So that action state actually is easy to, to compute. So is if you do Q dot, this will be its dynamics. But why it doesn't appear in the dynamics? Because it's an artificial variable that is only used for the terminal cost. So this is equal to zero. And on the other hand, the final cost, the final value is just one, okay? Because it comes from here. So this Q is identically equal to one, okay? So we don't care about it. I will just remove like this. Great. So Q, the disappear, let's say, is equal to one. So we, we will look for P. And now let's see what is the equation for P. So for P, we get the following. So P dot is equal to minus HX. That is minus one, U, P minus one. And P in the final time is the gradient of the cost with respect to X, that is zero. Great. Okay, so what do we do here? We have information at the final time, okay? This is the, inf is the information that we have. The final value of P, okay? So with that information, we will try to go backwards and construct the optimal control. We will try, we, we, will, we will succeed actually. <laughs> we will go backwards and, and construct the optimal control. So, but first, let us observe, uh, do some observations. So first, this is the adjoint equation. Okay, I would write adjoint equation. And still, I have to write the maximum condition that is crucial here, it's essential, essential. So I will put max for the maximum condition. So it's the following. So you, I will write it like this. U star is in the R max of the Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian here was, uh, it has the shape that I put before. I was just, I will just write in a clever way to put the control as a coefficient. So omega x t d t minus. And usually for the optimal trajectory, I put a star. Great. And this is for omega that uh, are the possible values of, um, of the control that are between zero and one because it was a percentage. Perfect. So we have this, right? So let's see if th there is an important point here that uh, may maybe some people heard about it. Actually, uh, there is, uh, it's, it's about what's called singular arcs. So people that do geometrical control actually deal a lot with singular arcs because normally they deal with problems that are affine with respect to the control. Actually, if we go to our problem, so this is our problem. Sorry. There is an important feature that this problem has that is all the functions are affine with respect to the control. Okay, so when we pass to the major form, what we can do is writing the dynamics like this. Let's say I will use another letters. So, okay. The dynamics can be written like this. Here we have only one control. Okay. Maybe you are more familiar with this notation, I imagine. Okay, where F0 and F1 are vector fields. Here there is only a scalar uh, control. Okay, so in this kind of, of problems, when things are nice, when things are nice, you just have has a bang bang structure. That means that uh, you is either zero or one at any time, almost everywhere. Okay, at almost every time, it's either zero or one that are the bounds. But uh, if you are not lucky, 
you can be in the in the interior of the interval. And when you is in the interior of the interval, that means that you, you start, of course, is strictly between zero and one. This is what is called singular arc. Okay. And singular arcs are a bit more complicated to to compute, okay, because they cannot be calculated from the maximum condition easily. Okay, let's see why. So I will I go here. Everything changed to red. <laughs> okay, I prefer black. So what's going on? What what happens? What when do singular arcs appear? When this is equal to zero. Okay. If that, that quantity that is the coefficient in the maximum condition of the control is equal to zero, well, then we have no idea of what the value of the control is. If it has a definite sign, then the control is either in the lower or in the upper bound. But when it's zero, is that uh, singular situation that is more complicated. More complicated, but okay, a lot of people study that, I, I among them. But of course, this should be a simple example. So we want to, we want to see that this is not happening, okay? That the coefficient of u is not zero. So it is easy to see that uh, this, um, okay, that the state is always positive in the sense that it starts from a positive, it starts from a positive value, okay? And then, let's go to the equation. X starts from a positive value and given the dynamics that it has, when it reaches zero, it stays in zero. It means that X equals zero is an equilibrium of the system. So we will, we will only analyze the interval where X is strictly positive because after that, nothing happens. So we don't care. So we can solve the problem in the interval zero and the time where X becomes zero if that happens, okay? I will write then that, okay, let's go. So we can assume, I will write that uh, in, in the next line, but we can assume that this is positive. So we only care ab about this being not equal to zero, okay? But that's easy because if that's zero in an interval, okay, that means if this is zero in a positive measure interval, then that means that, uh, well, P is equal one, of course. And if we look at the, at the adjoint equation that I wrote here, so it means that this is zero, okay? But at the same time, that means that P dot is equal to minus one. So P dot is on one side constant, and on the other side, it has a derivative equal to minus one in the same interval. That cannot happen. Okay, so this implies at the same time that p dot is equal to minus one, and this is a contradiction. Okay, so we are lucky enough in this problem to remove the appearance of these singular arcs. So we don't have. Um, singular arcs, okay? This is the optimal control. Always assumes the values in the, in the bounds. So it's either zero or one. It's what's usually known as bang bang. Okay, and bang bang is good news. Okay, great. Let's see. So just to finish with this example. One second. Okay, perfect. Great. So as I said before, as X equals zero is an equilibrium of the system, we just, uh, we just work on the interval where, sorry for that. Okay. So X equals zero is an equilibrium. So we assume that X star, the, the, the optimal trajectory is equal to zero in 
zero and some time, okay? And we solve the problem here, okay? It's equivalent. It's, uh, we can deduce that very fast just looking at the equations, okay? And actually, okay, so what's going on? Now we have that, we have this information, actually the idea of being bang bang, either zero or one, to see that, we go back to the maximum condition here above, okay? We go back to this condition and we see when u is uh, zero and when it is one. And it will depend actually on the sign on p minus one. So we can deduce that u star is equal to one. So the writing is uh, not improving. Okay, uh, it's better. It's equal to one if p is positive. I will write p of t better. Zero if, sorry, positive, no, one is the threshold. It's zero if p of t is smaller than one, perfect. So now we have decided the value of u as a function of p. That's another important feature. I will talk a bit about that later when I present the um, shooting algorithm, okay? So basically what we did here is writing u as a function, I will use, oops, I will use upsilon in the next slide. So as a function of t, of p, sorry, okay? That's good information, great. So now we only want to solve p. Okay, and to solve P, it's not hard. So actually, we go to the adjunct equation. We know that P in the final value is zero. We have that information that is due to my, the maximization of the, of the problem. And we go backwards, okay? I will not get, give all the details, but it, it can be easily deduced that, okay, so P at the final value is zero. Okay, so I will do a picture here. And the final value is zero. So if we have P like this, P starts here. And it's easy to see, okay, when it's zero, so the control is zero as well. And it's easy to see that the derivative is negative. It's just looking at the equation. So it, it will look like this. It will enter like this to zero and then at some point, going backwards, it would look like this, okay? This, this can be analytically deduced. I will not enter in the details just to not bore you with all the calculations, but uh, we can deduce this form for P, okay? So that implies that we can get the shape of U star. Okay, so u star will be zero when um, p is here. U star will be this. Okay, that's a function, <laughs> and this. Okay, this is u star. Okay, perfect. And there is some switching time here that has to be computed. Switching time is the time where it switches from zero to one, okay? Great. In the slides that I will send to the organizers, all the details of the calculations will be there, okay? But now I will, I will just keep some of them. Great. So we, we could solve that problem. So, so we were able to arrive to the last, to the final result that is calculating the optimal control. With that, we can compute the, the optimal state and then the optimal value, perfect. And we actually, since we did the deduction like uh, step by step, we didn't leave any other possible solution outside. So this is the unique optimal control, great. But it was not easy. It was, this was a very simple problem, but it was not, I mean, it takes at least one or two hours to solve this, okay? Even in a very simple case. 
And sometimes there is uh, no way to solve it analytically. Okay, great. So this is an application and I will continue with the applications today. This is another problem that is called the linear quadratic regulator. Okay, so the linear quadratic regulator is, can be seen as a simple model that is a linear equation with the quadratic cost. Okay. And it also can be seen as the linearization of a nonlinear problem, okay? But a nonlinear problem that has a quadratic cost in the, in the, in the control. So let's see. We have a linear equation x in x, that is the state variable. So x dot is equal to a x plus b u. And then we have this cost. So this is minimizing the this cost that is let's say what is important we have quadratic term in u a quadratic term in x and a quadratic term in the final value so we can think of this as minimizing the we can look at this as minimizing the effort of taking this linear linear system in x to this final value of uh, two, sorry. Now we, we don't have uh, endpoint constraints here. So I forget about what I say, okay? So we are just letting the system go and we are minimizing the effort, okay? Great. So because of what, uh, since we have this uh, hypothesis here that uh, all the matrices here are at least positive semi-definite, actually. So for Q, the coefficients of X, either X in time T or X in the final time are positive semi-definite and R, that is the most important coefficient, that is the coefficient of, of U is positive definite. It's actually positive definite along the, the whole interval, okay? In a close interval, that's important. Great, so perfect. We have this problem, that's a very simple problem. It's applied in, in engineering, actually. The, if we look at um, optimal control theory in engineering, most of the, of the literature, like in the first 20 or 30 years, were about this linear quadratic regulator, okay? So great, we have this problem and uh, what, what's good about this problem? What is good about this problem is the following. So when we write the Hamiltonian, I use here, I, I remember that yesterday I said that the, that the action state were going to be row vectors, but here just to avoid transposing every thing that I write, I just use column vector for simplicity. So the Hamiltonian has this form, okay, easy. So we multiply by P the state dynamics, okay. And then since we are minimizing here because it's minimizing an effort, okay. Since we're minimizing here is the equivalent to maximizing the opposite. So that's why a minus appear on here, okay. That is, so we have P multiplied by the dynamics minus the cost, okay? So here, I, recalling the question that I had a few minutes ago, here we put the cost inside, okay? I'm just uh, being a bit fast, actually. If I want to apply exactly the Pantry and Maximum Principle that I wrote yesterday in that form, I should convert this cost into an additional state variable, okay? But I will not do that because we already know that when we do that, the, the coefficient, sorry, not the coefficient, the multiplier associated to that additional state variable is equal to one, okay? In this case, it will be equal to minus one. So we can just add this to the Hamiltonian that is equivalent, great. Okay, perfect. So once we have this, I said before that it was crucial that the 
that the matrix R, that is the coefficient of the control, is positive definite. Okay, that is crucial. Why is it crucial? Okay, because here, so in this simple version of the linear quadratic regulator, where there are no constraints of the control, neither constraints on the final state, that's very simple. Okay, what's happening? We have to maximize. Sorry. this quantity perfect but so it's just we have to differentiate h with respect to u and that's good news so when we differentiate h with respect to u everything it's easy because r has the uh, because r has the good properties so from the maximization of the hamiltonian we can get an exact equation for the optimal control, okay? An exact equation in terms of the cost AP, as it was before, okay? So, and this is the unique control, like written in this form, this is called a feedback form. I imagine many of you heard about feedback, I've heard feedback in some, some point of life. Okay, so this is a Figma form, and this is the unique control verifying the contrarian maximum principle. Okay, because of course P is unique. Great. This is a feedback form, but it's not the best feedback form ever because what's going on? We depend on P, that is the co state, is the multiplier. If we want to, I mean, if we are doing a practice practical problem and we want a useful feedback form, usually what we expect to compute is u as a function of x. That would be a better like this. That will be a more applicable feedback form, okay? When at each time the, the control or the action that we do depends on the state, okay? But, okay. As a question of terminology, this uh, form that depends on P is also, is also called feedback form. So what happened here? We could like remove U. Let's say that we don't care about U um, anymore. U has already um, an expression in terms of the other variables, right? So it remains to compute the other variables that are X and P but X and P have differential equations, okay? They, they are solutions of differential equations. So let's see how we, we can completely solve this linear quadratic regulator using the Pontarian maximum principle. So I added here a reference, but then at the end of the each section, I put all the references again, okay? So a lot of details of the linear quadratic regulator are well nicely explained in this uh, book by Liverson. So let's show, I will not show, uh, enter in all the details here. I just want to comment on what, what is the next step. So we remove U from the formulation basically. Every time that U appears, we replace it by the feedback form that we find, that we found, okay? So now what's happening? It's like we already applied the maximum condition to get that information from you. So what remains for us? What, is, what remains for us is the state equation and the adjoint equation. So this, with those two expressions, we will try to solve completely the problem, okay? So for the adjoint variable, we had this. This is the adjoint equation, okay? And with the transversality condition that is here, remember that we have like M transpose. <laughs> no. No, come on, X of X. Then this was the terminal cost, okay? Great. So that is the, um, the value of the, that is the form of the transversality condition, perfect. So now we put together the two equations, the two differential equations, okay? 
we get this, right? So here, instead of u that was appearing here, we put that value, right? Because the equation for was x dot equal to a u plus a x plus b u, okay? But we can replace u by the, by the equation that we know, right? Again, we arrive now, so we reduce the system, the, the optimal control problem to solving this system of differential equations, basically. That's the idea. And this is important, and I will go back to this uh, feature of the problem when I talk about algorithms, okay? So perfect. Now that we have this, there is a lot more calculation. I will not detail, I will just show what, what are the what are the essential of, ne of the of the steps that follow? Great. So basically, this is a linear system. So this is a linear system. So we use the transition matrix to write the linear system in in a different way. Okay. But more precisely, we use the transition matrix of that linear system. So that will be called phi. Okay, and we can write this in the following way. Okay, using the transition matrix. So here is written in blocks, but this is actually phi. Okay, so we can express x star and u star, uh, sorry, x star and p as the matrix multiplied by what I did is using the final values. Okay. Why, why we do that? Because we can get both final values as a function of X star of the final value, basically. So the idea is that using this expression, okay, so we get P of T as a function, as a matrix multiplied by this, by X star of T1, but at the same time, using inverse of matrices, we have X star of T1 as a function of X star of T. So the last point is just showing that P is what's written in this equation. Actually the co-state is equal to matrix multiplied by the state variable. And that is Right, right. That way we can write everything, all the information in terms of the um, state variable. Perfect. So now we get a more interesting feedback. That is a state feedback. Okay. It doesn't have dual information. It's a primal feedback, let's say, for you. Perfect. So to close the theory, here and to completely solve the linear quadratic regulator, there is one step that is missing that is showing that this equation, this sorry, this matrix P actually exists. That it exists and a way to calculate it. That's okay, a few more uh, slides of calculations that I will not do here, but this is related to the Riccati differential equation. I don't know if you have heard about it, okay? But basically that matrix P is a solution of a differential, ordinary differential equation that is called Riccati differential equation. And so the, the problem now of solving the linear quadratic regulator is reduced to solving a differential equation on matrices. And that is to close the, to, to finish the cycle and, and solve the problem. Okay, and the details and all the calculations on Riccati are in that book of Liverson that I detailed. I show the reference in the slide before. Great, okay, perfect. So let's see, sorry. So again, even in this, let's say, this is like the easiest problem that we can get in optimal control. It's linear, linear dynamics, quadratic cost. Okay, this is the easy. So even in this easy framework, 
we need a lot of calculations, okay, to solve, to completely analytically solve the optimal control problem. Okay, but how can we use the Pontrain maximum principle to do some numerics, to create a numerical scheme? So let's see. I go back to the problem. That was the problem. I, without final constraints, an easy, easy formulation, okay, just to illustrate the uh, the, this shooting method that I will explain now. Great. So we have to do some assumptions. So the shooting method cannot be directly applied to any problem. We have to do some as, an assumption. So we have to do some analytical work before writing the shooting method that allow us to deduce that the optimal control that we are looking for satisfies one condition, which is the condition is what is called reduction hypothesis. It's what we saw in the last two problems. What happened in the last two problems? That using the maximum condition, so using the fact that U star maximizes the Hamiltonian, we can write U as a function of the other variables. Okay, so using this information, there is some calculations and some mathematical deductions, we can write u as a function of time if some, uh, some data function appears in the way and of x and p. Okay, that's what I, I said before, that, that was a, a, an important feature of problems, right. So imagine that we can do this. So just recalling some comments. In the example of the factory and reinvestment and production, we have this situation. We could write u star, okay? We could write u star as a function of p. We have that, okay? Here we can see that uh, this epsilon, okay? Oops, you know, I never use that letter. Okay, that epsilon is not continuous. Okay, but that's not an inconvenient for the shooting algorithm. Right. And the second comment is I will pass another slide right here. But it's the second comment that also in the linear quadratic regulator that I show, we had that uh, reduction hypothesis. So we could write you without doing, before doing all the system of differential equations, we could write the optimal control, okay? Oh, there is always a star missing here, uh, as a function of the other variables. So what is the important thing? That we can write u as the function of the differential variables. That's the idea. So x and p are the differential variables and u is a, an independent uh, variable that appeals al, uh, in an algebraic way in all the equations. Perfect. Great. So imagine we have that situation. Okay. So the situation is that u, the optimal control, is a function of time. Uh, okay. Great. So, and this is implied by the maximum condition of the Pontrain maximum principle. Perfect. Once we have that information, we use it. We use it to do what? So we go back, as we did in the linear quadratic regulator, we go back to the system of differential equations and we insert that information on the optimal control. Okay, I remove all the stars here to, to simplify, okay? And we write a new system of equations. So what's happening? So here there was the control appearing, okay? Here the same, okay? And we have the other information, the fixed initial condition that is not necessary. I, we can have variable initial condition with some constraints and just simplify for the presentation, of course. And we have the transversality condition given by the contrarian maximum principle. Transversality condition, okay, given by PMP. Perfect. So we have that system of uh, differential equation, right? But what's going on here? 
So U disappeared completely. <clears throat> we only have X and P that are differential variables. And, uh, but there is one problem. So we cannot solve this directly. It's not that we can integrate, okay, and that's over. What's going on? The problem that we, the inconvenient that we, that we have here is that we have information of X. Oh, that's very sensitive. <laughs> information of X at T equals zero and information of P at T equal capital T. Okay, so we cannot integrate, not forward, not backwards, because the equations are coupled, okay? P enters in the equation of X, X enters in the equation of P. This is what is usually called two-point boundary value problem. And we have to, we, we, people have to find a way to solve them, but to solve them numerically, okay? Because we cannot solve them analytically. Great. So, what is crucial here is the fact that the boundary conditions are given at different times. Great. So this induces the definition of what's, of what's called shooting function. Perfect. So this is the two point boundary value problem. Okay. Sorry, we a bit. The, it's not the same as before. I changed the initial condition. So we take the equations, the differential equations, okay? And we write the initial value problem. So this, the happy notation for this will be initial value problem, <laughs> okay? So we have that initial value problem, perfect. That for X at zero has the exact information, the fixed value for X and for P at zero has some value P zero that we don't know, it's an unknown, okay? So solving, so let's say, we starting from, from, from the optimal control problem, we wrote the two point boundary value problem, and now we wrote, we wrote this initial value problem, okay? So what we want to do is find the solutions X and P of this initial value problem Okay, such that P at the final time and X at the final time verify this. That's the idea. That's the goal now. Great. So this induces the definition of a simple function. It's a function that to each possible value of P0 that is not determined, inserts this value P0 in the initial value problem, solves the problem because in that case, one can integrate at least numerically, okay? And calculates this value, okay? So that's a function of P0. And what we want is to find P0 such that this value is equal to zero. That's the idea. So once we do that, the P0 is the good initial condition for P. Okay. And that and completely determines P and X, and then we can compute U at the end. Great. So that's what I wrote here, what I have just said. So solving the two point boundary value problem that we've had in a few slides before is equivalent to solving this nonlinear equation that is finding the right initial value for P, okay? And that is an equation in infinite dimension. Okay. But what's going on is not completely easy because when we want to, already when we want to evaluate that function, we have to go through a differential system and a system of differential equations. Because every time we have P0, we have to insert that value in the equation for X and P, solve, find the final value for P and X and compute S, okay? So the evaluation has a, a differential system in the middle. And I, I, will, I will continue. 
sorry, I will say that in the, when, when the block arrives here. So I, I, I wrote a remark here and I added uh, um, a short example at the end. So in the cases where this uh, feedback, so this is the notation for the feedback. So it was u equal to um, epsilon t xp. Okay. Even when the feedback is not regular, that it happens in, in many applied uh, problems, the, we can write a shooting algorithm and, and solve the problem. I will show an example that does that. So great. What is the shooting algorithm? Finally, is applying Newton, Newton's method to solve this equation in final dimension. Okay. So basically, this is the iteration that's easy. So the k plus one value is equal to that. So I think everybody knows the Newton method, but I just want, wanted to write explicitly the Newton method because just to detail the derivative that appears here. Okay. So Newton, Newton's method is locally quadratically convergent if that derivative at the, let's say the, the optimal, the, the, at the solution, if that is in vertical, okay? And there is a whole big theory of giving sufficient conditions, sufficient conditions under which that matrix is invertible. And those sufficient conditions are actually related to optimality conditions, okay? So this is a way of numerically solving an optimal control problem. More details can be found here. Actually, there is, this is a nice survey that has a lot of, of uh, references, okay? So this is a Pontryagin appro numerical approach to solving optimal control problems. There are other approaches, uh, one, very uh, used approach is just discretizing the problem. Okay. Just you take the optimal control problem, you discret discretize everything from the beginning and you get an optimization problem in Rn for n, a very big number, and you just uh, solve. And there are other numerical approaches. An important one is the one that goes through the hamilton jacobi equation, but I will not enter in that detail. So just to end, I, Maria yesterday wanted some applications. <laughs> so I, yes, I just uh, recovered this uh, application actually. So it's an application of the shooting method uh, in uh, an epidemiological model. I don't know if people can still talk and hear about epidemiological models in this moment. <laughs> For me, I'm, I would like to avoid them for a while, but uh, okay, they are useful. <laughs> and, and in this uh, work that we did with the, with the student, we, we could uh, apply the shooting method and, and everything worked. So let's see. This is the an epidemiological model. So we have three classes, uh, susceptible, infected and recovered people. Okay, so there is a human population or it can be another thing, but he, since this, this are, there is vaccination, I imagine these are humans, okay? And there is a disease going on. So S is the susceptible population, that is the one that can get infected. I is the infected population and R are the recovered population that cannot get infected, but after a while they can, they can come back to the S class, to the susceptible class. Okay, that's an additional feature that, that can be removed, of course, but uh, it, many diseases have, have that feature, of course. Okay, so let's see. This is, uh, so the, the population enters in the compartment of susceptible with some growth, okay? I will do like this. I will pass to the next slide so the system appears. Great. So the population enters here. Okay, and being susceptible, then if uh, we get in contact with an infected person with this, uh, let's say, probability, we go, we 
become infected or we can get vaccinated and go this way. The vaccination here is a control and is the control V, okay? And if we are in R, we can go back with some rate to the susceptible class. And this is actually, it would be better to have another arrow here that does like this, okay? But that's the idea, right? If we are infected, we can die naturally. So mu is the natural mortality or we can die from the disease. So Delta is the additional mortality due to the disease, <clears throat> great. And, or, or we can survive, of course, and survive to, through treatment, okay, or natural recovery. That's the idea, great. So more or less, this is the system. So these are the equations. So F will be some birth uh, rate and N here is the total population, great. And so the cost function here will be, we want to minimize in a given interval, the total quantity of infected, minimizing as well the cost of vaccination and the cost of treatment, okay? So here vaccination enters linearly and treatment quadratically. The idea is that uh, treating a lot of people like it's very expensive after a threshold because you have to construct the hospitals and things like that. But vaccinating a lot of people is just uh, producing more vaccine. It should be linear, okay? Perfect. Just to show, so well, this is the last, uh, the whole system, okay? We can remove one of the variables, okay? Since n is the sum of the others. So we remove, we only get the system of three state variables. We have some constraints, initial constraints and the constraints on the control, okay? So this system was inspired by two problems given in these references below, okay? And just we solve, okay? We solve numerically using the shooting algorithm. So what the, the only thing that I want to show here is the following. So here, doing some, some anal an analysis before applying the shooting algorithm and lead us to the following structure of the optimal control. So this is the vaccination that was, I think, that V. So this is V star. And this is U star. There were two controls. OK. So the solution is here, is the one in blue. and. Uh, so this is the shooting solution. Actually, the one in blue is that the one that matters. And the one in red is the one that we obtain using a toolbox that is called Bocop, okay? A software that is used for optimal control. Perfect. So basically what we have to do here in the shooting algorithm is that we will have the reduction hypothesis. So we will have a feedback concept. Not a good moment, okay. We will have a feedback here in this interval, okay? And in the other intervals, we can deduce derivating or using another numerical approach just to, just to get a, a, an initial guess. We can deduce that here and here the controls are bang, bang. okay? And so here this, uh, if we do like a feedback for the whole control, that feedback is discontinuous. But it doesn't matter because in this shooting algorithm, it's like we solve each piece separately and we take these times, let's call them T1 and T2, as additional variables, okay? That's, I, if, if you want more details, we can discuss it later. But the, the idea is that in this, it's very common to have a feedback that is discontinuous, but that's not a problem for, for shooting algorithm. And more details are here in this, uh, in the thesis of, of uh, this student, and we're finishing the simulations to send the article. Okay, and with that, I'm sorry for the five minutes uh, excess, but with that, I, I can finish my lesson today. Thank you. Thank you, Ferreira.
Thank you. So